Hey, good morning. Oh, whoops. <laughs> hey, Michelle. Ooh, that light is so bright behind me. I gotta find a warmer place to scope from. It's too cold outside today. Uh, all the, uh, a lot of ice. We have frost. Hi, everybody. We have frost and the water bowls are frozen over. Let's see. Good morning, good morning. Very. It's too cold outside to even with my heated blanket. It's just too cold. <laughs> we've, we've gone beyond. Good morning, Amelia. We've gone beyond heated blanket time. Thanks, I made this. I crocheted it with tiny yarn. It took forever. It took so long forever that I gave up. It's supposed to be twice as big. Hi, Sarah. It's supposed to be twice as big. So, the big giant light behind me. That's not working. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, we've had a lot of messages lately about um, uh, love being the content, not the form. I just realized that in thinking over... Oh, thanks. Uh, oh, yeah, wide. Yes, you're right, Linda. It's supposed to be twice as wide as it is. It's supposed to come, like, all the way down. But I got I got bored. <laughs> so I quit. <laughs> I'm a quitter. I'm a knitter quitter. Or crochet quitter. So, um... I realized in thinking about yesterday's scope and scope from a few days ago that we're getting the... And some stuff on Facebook... We're getting this repeated message that love is content and to let go of the idea of what form it's going to take. Um, I've had some, thank you. I've had several experiences lately that I are still playing out so rapidly that I haven't really wanted to, whoops, go into talking about them much because I don't think they're done yet. And when I tell a story, I like to know what the end's going to be. Of course, we never know what the end's going to be, but um, things are, are, are happening in really rapid succession. So we'll see how that ends up. But it's all about letting go of form and letting go of looking at any particular form as being your source. I am going to get to our reading, but this is related to it. Everything in the, the Tao and everything in Byron Katie's work and everything that we're reading with Course in Miracles is choosing love over fear. And that's an easy statement to make. But the interesting part is when you do that, all the stuff, we've talked about this before, and we, and we know it's true, that when we choose love, all the things that are not love come into our consciousness for us to deal with. So sometimes... Oh, good. Sometimes that looks like a sudden weird um, financial problem. Or sometimes your car breaks down. Or sometimes your um, spouse does something stupid. I don't know. You you know, your spouse isn't doing something stupid for your lesson. But it's your reactions to it. Okay, those things happen all the time. But it's our reactions to them that bring it into our conscious awareness if we're willing to say, Hey, buddy, this is how you're dealing with life. When something goes wrong, here's where you're ending up. Do you want to continue to do that? Or do you want to choose a different path? So it's not that your car broke to teach you a lesson. Your car broke because it broke. <laughs> your reaction because you've put yourself on this path is your information. Your car is not your source of good. Your spouse is not your source of love. Your bank account is not your source of prosperity. Oh, good, Heidi. Um, you're, by looking toward those things, that's where you are choosing form over love. Yes. So, and if you continue, once you've made this statement to the universe, if you continue to look at form as your source, what happens is those forms start to disappear. They start to break. They go away. Door after door gets shut in your face. And it's not as a punishment. I don't believe in lessons. Um, I believe in what you're resonating with. And you've chosen to resonate in a different place. So everything that doesn't resonate there 
goes away. It feels like the rug's getting pulled out from under you, but that's not what's happening. You're being shown. This is where you're still choosing form. This is where you still think your spouse is where you get your love. Yeah, alignment. This is where you still think that your money comes from. This is where you still think that your health comes from. So it's shut. The door shuts. And you constantly get brought back to the choice. Fear or love. Fear or love. Over and over. All day long. For the last week. Every time I feel discomfort about anything. I'm grabbing it. Amplifying it. Until it naturally falls by itself. That's not a fun process. It's not fun. <laughs> but it is working. So for a very long time, I thought the way I felt when I was in love was love. Erg, yeah. Of course, that's not it. Men, if you're, you know, uh, just by sitting with it and asking to make it bigger, like really bringing it into your awareness and making it bigger. So not touching on an uncomfortable feeling and skating away from it, going into it and asking what we talked about yesterday, magic's trying to find the form. <clears throat> Magic, love, source, God is always seeking for a place to form itself in your life. It's the banana thing that we talked about yesterday, which is not as sexual as it sounds out of context. Um, Magic, love, yes, tell me more. It's the tell me more feeling. Show me what you got. I'm here to witness. I'm witnessing this pain. I'm witnessing this rage. I'm witnessing this anxiety. Um, and being with it. Fully present. Yes. Onward you go. Um, so all day long. Every day. Love or fear. Love or fear. The more I choose love. The more things that don't match love. Come up. For me to see. So. Good. 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 I'm glad. Um, so everywhere in your life that you're clinging to. Something being your source. Your periscope following is not your source. What if you just let. Which side of the heart's beating on. <laughs> what if you just let your heart beat. That's what I heard this morning. What if you just let your heart beat instead of trying to force it into a heart count? <laughs> oh no, somebody call an ambulance. So, yeah, so look at where you're clinging to form and thinking your source is your car or your job. Or your spouse. Or whatever. Or your credit cards. Or your line of credit. <laughs> whatever. So let's get to our reading. That was my uh, a way ambulance. I, yeah, I call a lot of, I spend a lot of time in the back of way ambulances. <laughs> or I have lately. I'm not anymore. So let's get to our book. Today is the Dowdy Jean book and Byron Katie Day. So this is um, where we start. <laughs> ah, so funny. Wee, ambulance. Wee, wee. Chapter 15 is People of Power. And it relates to everything we're talking about. A deep letting go, I guess, is what's going on in my life. And where I won't let go, it's being snatched out of my hand. <laughs> let go, let go. I have my... um. Money Mala on today. And I spent a whole day the other day with a mantra of I'm welcoming new streams of revenue. So my streams of revenue dried up. <laughs> That's how it works. You're like, I'm welcoming new streams of revenue. And the ones you have just disappear. <laughs> and here you go. And then you get to choose. Love or fear. Love or fear. Love or fear. That's your heartbeat. Love, fear. Love, fear. Love, fear. <laughs> people of power. Once upon a time, people who knew the way 
the stream in my backyard is abundant. I am abundant in babies with twins, and I am abundant in water. <laughs> oh, and cats. I'm abundant in cats and cat hair. Cat hair, cats, water, and babies. I'm very abundant there. <laughs> I'm almost out of coffee, so <laughs> let's turn cats into cash. Yes, but you make a good point, um, Sarah. When you, when you, and I'll just say that for people who aren't catching it, when you focus on the areas of your life where you are abundant, you get you generate that feeling of you know what? I'm so rich in babies. I'm overflowing in babies. I'm so rich in cats. I'm so rich in cats. I'm overflowing with cats. And there is so much water in my part of the world right now. We are abundant with water. We have so much water. We have more water than we could ever drink. And you can then transfer that feeling over to where you don't feel abundant. If you don't feel like you have enough love, you can like, well, I have enough water. Look at all these cats and babies. <laughs> I got cats and babies for days. You want a cat or a baby? I got you covered. <laughs> okay, people of power. <laughs> Once upon a time, people who knew the way were subtle, spiritual, mysterious, penetrating, unfathomable. Since they are, since they're inexplicable, I can only say what they seemed like. Cautious, oh yes, as if wading through a winter river. Alert, as if afraid of the neighbors. Polite and quiet, like house guests. Elusive, like melting ice. Blank, like uncut wood. Empty, like valleys. Mysterious, oh yes. They were like troubled water. Who can by stillness, little by little, make what is troubled grow clear? This is so important. Who can by stillness, little by little, make what is troubled grow clear? Who can by movement, little by little, make what is still grow quick? To follow the way is not to need fulfillment, because unfulfilled one may live on, needing no renewal. Her notes say, in the first stanza, we see the followers of the way in ancient times as remote and inaccessible, but the second stanza brings them close and alive in a series of marmal of marmalade delicious of marvelous similes. I am particularly fond of the polite and quiet house guests. Yeah, the images of the valley and uncut or uncarved wood will recur again and again. So let me read it one more time this way. Let me get some coffee. Let me get some coffee on my nose. And probably now my glasses. Ouch, it's hot. Once upon a time, people who knew the way were subtle, spiritual, Mysterious, penetrating, and unfathomable. Since they're inexplicable, I can only say what they seemed like. Cautious, oh yes, as if wading through a winter river. Alert, as if afraid of the neighbors. Polite and quiet, like house guests. Elusive, like melting ice. Blank, like uncut wood. Empty, like valleys. Mysterious, oh yes, they were like troubled water. Who can by stillness, little by little, make what is troubled grow clear? Who can by movement, little by little, make what is still grow quick? To follow the way is not to need fulfillment. Not to need it. Unfulfilled, one may live on. Needing no renewal. I love 
her interpretation of this book. So now let's read Stephen Mitchell's take on the same thing, and then we'll see what Byron Cat Katie can tell us about how to put that into action. Okay. The ancient masters were profound and subtle. Their wisdom was unfathomable. There's no way to describe it. All we can describe is their appearance. They were careful as a they were careful as someone crossing an iced over stream, alert as a warrior in enemy territory, courteous as a guest, fluid as melting ice, shapeable as a block of wood, receptive as a valley, clear as a glass of water. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? The master doesn't seek fulfillment. Not seeking, not expecting, she is present and can welcome all things. All things. Good, bad, disappearing, whatever. All is welcome. In a house like that. I think I may have a third degree burn in my throat. That's really hot. <laughs> the ancient masters were profound and subtle. Their wisdom was unfathomable. There's no way to describe it. All we can describe is their appearance. They were careful as someone crossing an iced over stream. Alert as a warrior in enemy territory. <laughs> Courteous as a guest. Fluid as melting ice. Shapeable as a block of wood and receptive as a valley. Clear as a glass of water. Do you see what that's saying? That you adapt. My perception of this is that you flow like water through every circumstance through every encounter, through every interaction, you just flow. The way, to me, is very fluid. It's like Tai Chi. It goes around. It goes softly through. It goes quietly over. Simply under. It just continues to flow, coming back to love, back to love, back to love, all the time. But do you have the patience for that? Because that takes patience. When your mind is going chihuahua speed in your head, it takes patience to just sit with it and just hold it and just pet its little head until it starts to calm down. Because the way forward is not clear until the chihuahua shuts up. You won't know where to go. You won't know what to do. You won't be aware of the inspired action until your mind is quiet and you can hear that still small voice or you can hear, hear you can feel that um, compulsion in your gut. Not compulsion, that's a terrible word. You can feel the impulse in your gut. You can feel the impulse to move in your heart. You feel it, but it's so soft and so subtle and you have to be patient. Do you have the patience to wait Till your mud settles and the water is clear. When you start choosing love, you stir up the mud, let me tell you. And the water will clear as you face the mud and just observe it and just be with it and just witness it. And just love it. Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? Can you sit and not take action until you feel the soft, quiet impulse to move? That's when you know you're right, even if it looks wrong. That soft, quiet impulse to move may look wrong, but it will feel right, and you'll know in time that it was right. Don't seek fulfillment. Don't seek satisfaction. Don't seek followers and heart counts. Don't seek after your clients. Be in love, and you are lit up like a beacon, and your clients come to you. Your job offers come to you. Your spouse, your friends, they find you because you're lit up with, you're lit up energetically. 
and you'll be found. You don't have to get so cranked up about finding, trying to find. Let yourself be found. Be receptive as a valley. We're not used to that. Yeah. Koya is helping me a lot. And I don't even do the whole thing. I just do pieces of it with the... I feel like moving, but it can't move. So I do Koya so I can move. Finding yourself made you open. Yeah. You get real security when you're centered in yourself to receive. Yeah. You just... You feel like you gotta move. So you dance until you know what the outward material world movement is. You can just dance with that compulsion. That's sometimes a compulsion to move. Dance through it while you're waiting for the impulse action to take out in the world. Deal with the compulsion by dancing while waiting for the impulse for what to do next. Not speaking, not speaking, don't speak. Not seeking, not expecting. She is present and can welcome all things. Our expectations, our outward seeking is terrible, terribly destructive to our process. Um, my name is Michelle Wolf. I'm a little late on this. You can find me at caddyshackdesigns.com. That's our commercial break. Break for commercial. Caddyshackdesigns.com. This program brought to you by Michelle Wolf, CaddyshackDesigns.com. You can find me there. Across the top are tabs that tell you what I do. Did you see that a cat just, look at this behind me. That's my life. That's my life, right there. Tonka? Tonka. He just pulled that whole thing off the shelf. He is not hashtagged. Tonka, the naughtiest cat in the world, for nothing. He'll just, he'll dig everything in there. It's Tonka. He pulled that box off a shelf. He got up there and pulled that box off, and now he will dig everything out of it onto the floor. Some days I love him. Some days I would like to find him a new home. <laughs> and then, so if you see what he's doing, that's what the universe does. When you say, I want to clear out. I want to clear my blocks. You get the universal cat knocking you over and digging out the box. He's a toddler. Yes, he is. Cats are perennial. Yes, hashtag little shit. Oh, the joys of feline. Being owned by felines. He'll get in there now. Probably he'll curl up on all that stuff and go to sleep. Um, yes. <laughs> Linda wants to tell us a funny, gross story. <laughs> We're continuing our commercial break. <laughs> I love your little dog. I love that you rescued your little dog out of the street. Literally out of the streets. And I don't know about you, but I love a funny, gross story. So let's see what uh by while we're waiting. Oh Michelle's getting a puppy today. Aw. He is a joy to me. Puppies are so joyous. Michelle gets a puppy today. Linda rescued a puppy out of the street. We thank God don't have any puppies. We have toddlers, it's the same thing. He was on your bed sleeping and laying back down. I think it's a black lab, isn't it? Michelle Lee, are you getting a black lab? In the fan, in the... Oh. If, uh... You thought he wanted to go for a walk? A black lab. <clears throat> if you're on here and you're not connected to me on Facebook, find me. Yeah, they take their sweet time. Oh my God, I, th I think I know where this is going. <laughs> <clears throat> A 
friend of yours had puppies. Oh, baby puppies. They are so sweet. I will never own another puppy. Uh, but they are so sweet. So he jumps behind you, lays on the pillow behind you and around your neck and snuggles into your neck and pees on you. <laughs> Uh-oh. Amelia, if you are if you want to connect on Facebook, I can add you to our Perry fam group that Michelle created. There's, pu- uh, there's puppy pictures in there, and we post stuff in there that we find relevant to what we talk about in the morning. And pees on your back. I totally know. <laughs> That's why I kept getting up and flopping. Michelle, your friend is a black lab. That's the coolest thing ever. You're like, hmm, that's warm on my pillows. <laughs> He's like, I gotta pee, I gotta pee, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. Okay, I'm peeing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Puppies and babies. Sarah's our smart ass of the day. <laughs> I love going on Sarah's scope and being a smart ass. <laughs> Scold him? For what? <laughs> He's a baby. He had to pee. He told you. Your kids, it's, no, it's your kids' fault. Don't take that blame. Blame your kids. <laughs> He's a baby. If you can blame it on your kids. You can say, if you had gotten in here faster, I wouldn't have gotten peed on by the puppy. It's your fault. I'm sure you can find someone else to take the blame. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, blame your kids. Don't blame yourself. Ew. Ugh. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> A Thousand Names for Joy is the Byron Katie book that we are uh, following along with the, with our Dow because it's her chapters follow along. <laughs> I'm going to be thinking about that all day. <clears throat> He's lucky to have you for a mom because a lot of people would not have would have scolded him and it's not his fault. He He's a baby. He had to pee. He can't take himself out to pee. <laughs> so we can just have a good laugh and feel gross for a while and then get over it. Okay, so her chapter 15 says the same thing. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? The master can't seek fulfillment. That's how dogs end up in shelters, is people don't understand. They're babies. And they're babies till they're about three years old. And then all of a sudden they're cool. <laughs> the master can't seek fulfillment. She's already filled to the brim. There isn't room for a drop more. When you have what you want, when you are what you want, there's the key. When you have what you want, nope. When you are what you want, I am abundance. I am all that water. I am all those cats. I am all that money. I am all that love. I am I am it. I am it. There's no impulse to seek outside yourself. If you're fully connected to love, you don't need to go looking for a source out in the world. You're already in it. Your awareness is already there. Seeking is the movement away from awareness that your life is already complete just as it is. The very act of reaching for the feather creates the wind creates the breeze that pushes it away. Reaching for the feather stirs the air and pushes it away. Reaching for it is the problem. Reaching for it creates the delay. You may still get what you want, but the very act of reaching for the feather creates the breeze that pushes it away. Reaching for it will not get you there. And if it does get you there, you won't be able to maintain it. Yes. Yes. 
Seeking is the movement away from awareness that your life is already complete, just as it is. Even at moments of pain, there's nothing wrong or lacking. Reality is always kind. What happens is the best thing that could happen. It can't be anything else. And you'll realize that very qu- clearly if you inquire. I have a friend whose wife fell in love with another woman. Uh, <laughs> well, she could have fallen in love with another woman. It's been known to happen. I have a friend whose wife fell in love with another man. He had been doing the work for a while, and instead of going into sadness and panic, he questioned his thinking. She should stay with me. Is that true? I can't know that. How do I react when I believe the thought she should stay with me? I get extremely upset. Who would I be without the thought? I would love her, and I would wish the best for her. This man really wanted to know the truth. When he questioned his thinking, he found something precious. Eventually, I was able to see it as something that should be happening because it was happening. When my wife told me about it, she didn't have to hide anything to protect me. It was amazing to hear what it was like for her without taking it personally. It was the most liberating experience I ever had. His wife, his wife moved in with the other man, and he was fine with that because he didn't want her to stay if she didn't want to. Why would we want someone to be with us that doesn't want to be there? A few months later, she hit a crisis point and wanted to talk. She went to her best friend, her husband, because they had been remained friends. They calmly discussed her options. She decided to get her own place so she could get clear on what she wanted. Eventually, she they ended up back together. Through all the drama, he inquired into his thoughts and returned to a calm and cheerful state of mind. He came to know for himself that the only possible problem he could have was his thinking. His wife gave him everything he needed to find his own freedom. Life is giving us every day everything we need to work through our tendencies to attach to form. It'll bring it to you. It'll bring it right to your doorstep and you can let go and let go. I often say that if I had a prayer, it would, be, it would be this. God, spare me from the desire for love, approval, or appreciation. Amen. God, spare me from the desire for love, approval, or appreciation. Amen. I know the benevolence of life. Why would I pray for something different? which would always be less than what's coming. God is another name for reality. That's a good way to look at it, too. God is another name for reality. It's complete. It's perfect. The thought of asking for what isn't never even arises. I, I had a co-worker once who put a big giant bumper stick on their, sticker on his car that said, God spare me from your followers. I thought that was the funniest thing ever. They actually tried to make him take it off. And he was like, no. (laughs) God spare me from your followers. God spare me from the desire for love, approval, or appreciation. (laughs) Well, our, uh, our deputy director was a diehard Catholic. Like she wore the, she wore giant crucifixes and everything. And he said, uh, when you stop wearing a crucifix to your government job, I'll take the bumper sticker off my truck. (laughs) I'll trade you your crucifix for my bumper sticker. She's like, well, I'm not giving up my crucifix. He's like, I'm not giving up my bumper sticker. Follower. (laughs) She was pretty hard to deal with. If I believed my thoughts, I would pray for one thing first, to be spared from the desire for love. This desire causes nothing but confusion in memory. You are love. It's what you are. No one else can give it to you in in the way that you're looking for. Because the way you're looking for is the awareness of what you already are. And so you're never going to find it out there. It shuts down the awareness of what you already have. It's painful to seek what you can never find outside of yourself. The Course in Miracles says we, as our, the, the seeking for those things. Bye, Nina. Love you. 
Okay, Susan, drive carefully. The Course in Miracles says that that is the dream. And it always leaves us in tears. Looking for anything outside ourselves always disappoints. Always breaks our hearts. Because it is always false. It's an illusion. If you understood it, you would stop seeking because you think you know what love looks like, what it should or shouldn't be. It becomes invisible to you. It's the blind seeking what doesn't exist. You beg, you plead, you bend over backwards, you do all sorts of other emotional acrobats in this unending search for a happy ending. This is the same with money. You can't go out there seeking money, seeking an income, because it just stays one step ahead of you, right? Because you're seeking it, so it has to be always in front of you. Because life gets you what you want. If you think I have to go find it, it says, oh, she wants to go find stuff. So we'll keep you in an endless loop of finding. That's what you said you wanted. I need to go find. I need to go find so you're always in the process of finding. You never get what you're trying to find. Because you didn't say, I want to be aware of what I've already got. I want to be aware of what's here. I don't want to go looking for it. I want to be found. The blind seeking what doesn't even exist. That's awesome. I'm looking the right. Yeah. Yeah. We do this for money too, right? Beg, plead, bend over backwards, sell our souls to the man, work at government agencies that kill you, <laughs> kill your heart, do all sorts of emotional acrobats, get ourselves in all kinds of trouble because we want to find money. Because we believe it's going to give us our happy ending. Yes, the right Right, and then I'll feel happy. The right partner. Bye, Linda, have a good day. The right amount of money, which is never a right amount of money. The right husband or wife or partner or boyfriend or whatever. The right, and then. It's, I want the right thing, and then I'll feel happy. Only by seeking the truth within will you find the love you can never lose and when you find it, your natural response is appreciation for everything. This would be my one prayer, because the answer to it brings the end of time and space. The answer to it brings the energy of pure, unlimited mind set free in all its power and goodness. When you stop seeking love or money, it leaves you with nothing to do. It leaves you with the experience of being done in a doing that is beyond you. It's a doing without doing. Yes, right? It's never enough. It's never enough. We always think if we need 3000 a month, that if we had 6000 a month, we would just be so much more happy. If we had 10000 a month, we'd be even happier. And it's never enough. The more you get when you're in that mind frame, the more scared you are of losing it. If you're not at peace with having nothing... Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear that. It ended my dad's life. I'm sure. His constant pursuit, his constant pressure to make more, just a little more, just one more truck, just a little more money, just a little bit bigger house, just a little bit more, just another motorcycle. Well, that may be true. My dad pressured himself for material achievement so hard that he neglected his health and he neglected his 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 um addictive his addiction. Uh addiction is a lifelong process. I don't believe in a like they say in AA that you never get better, that you never are healed. I, I don't believe that. But until you are, you've got to manage it. And his constant pursuit of money. Yeah. 
his constant pursuit of material achievement. Yeah, he wanted money and achievement more than family, although he said differently, of course. He wanted money and achievement more than his own health, more than his own well-being, and I killed him. It drove him in directions that were extremely unhealthy, and he died because of it. So, it's never enough. And until we get that, we're just lost. We're just lost in the wilderness. Eaten up by the hungry ghosts that they talk about. In, is it, It's Eastern, right? The hungry ghosts. That concept that it, it's a, it, you're just devouring. You're devouring the world and it's never enough. You're never satisfied. That is addiction. This would be my one prayer to let go of the desire for love because the answer it brings is all. It's all. When I don't look for approval outside of me, I remain as approval. Okay, Linda, have a wonderful day. Sorry that you got peed on. It is kind of funny, though. I'm kind of glad you told us about it. It was good for... It was, it was funny. <laughs> through, inquir through inquiring about my thoughts, I have come to see that I want you to approve of what you approve of because I love you. What you approve of is what I want because it's what you want. That's love. It wouldn't change anything. It already has everything. It already is everything. When you're connected to love, you don't run around and try and change people. You just let them be who they are. If they're in your space and you need them to leave, you ask you you exit them from your space, but you do it from a different energy. You do it from love. You're like, I really love you, and you cannot live here anymore. <laughs> I really, really love you, and if you're going to do this behavior... We will need to live in separate locations. It's different than saying, get the fuck out. I fucking hate you. That's totally different. I think what scares us is the nothing to do. So she mentions this. When you, when you stop seeking love, it leaves you with nothing to do. Tonka, I love you, buddy. And you are now an outdoor cat. And good luck. Here's a little bag of treats. Here's a blanket you can sleep on on the porch. But you can't live in here and do this. Little fuck fuck. <laughs> I think having nothing to do is scary. We think there's we think that there's literally nothing to do, but that's not true. It's not that you have nothing to do anymore. It's that what you do is in alignment with what you are. He is a little fuck fuck. I love him so much. That's the problem. He gets away with murder. <laughs> they all get away with murder. Who am I kidding? They rule this house. Look at this pile of furniture behind me. That's all theirs. And that door is a door in the window where they they have their own door. They have lots of furniture. They're rotten. They're totally rotten. I love them. Oh, they've got a spread. That's not all their furniture either. That's just the furniture on this side of the room. They have furniture over there. They have all their furniture outside. We built our... Uh, oh, they're so spoiled. So the outdoor enclosure we built, we got... Uh, Heath dragged down a huge log. It's like... It's got to be 10, 12 inches across. And seven feet tall. We dug a hole. When I say we, I mean he dug a hole. Put concrete in it. Stuck that log in. And now they have a log in the center of that enclosure that they can climb up on and sit on. He drug that log all the way down from the mountain with the four-wheeler. <laughs> They're so spoiled. And then we realized we had created a perfect serving platter for the hawks and the owls in the area to come eat a cat 
I was looking at it the next day and I was like, hmm. We just basically told the owls and the hawks that dinner is served. And here it is on a log platter for you. So we had to go back and add um, some steaks that are tall enough that it won't hurt the cats. But the hawks and the owls can't. With a rose in his mouth, he dragged the log down. It was for the cats. So he had a bag of Frisky's treats in his mouth the whole way. <laughs> yeah, the next day I was like, uh-oh. We just served, we just created a serving tray for the, serve our cats up for dinner. Yeah, he loves them too. It's so funny, he hated cats when I met him. I didn't have any cats, I had four dogs. He hated cats, hated them. I was like, have you ever lived with a cat? He's all, no. Like, you don't know anything about cats. I didn't want a cat either. I'm allergic to them. <laughs> so, then Grit showed up, two weeks old, lost in a snowstorm. Her siblings we took to the shelter, because at the time I didn't know that you don't take kittens to the shelter. They end up dying, and I feel terrible about that. Uh, but we didn't know. He's a cat person. He's 100% a cat person. It's so funny. We have five... Our neighbor has one that he doesn't No, it's too it's too far away. That uh that enclosure is like twenty eight feet by thirty six feet and it's right in the middle. So they'd have to really fly to get out. It's twenty it's twenty eight feet across, so thirty six feet long. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. I hate cats. I'm allergic to them. Let's get five. <laughs> Let's have five of them. And there's another one he would brought. He would have brought home if we were just like we just can't. We just can't. I can't even. We can't even take a cat. We can't even take another one. But there's you know the neighbor whose dogs we feed and provide care to because he doesn't take very good care of them. Um, has a cat. So he. So here's what Heath did. He went up to the neighbors and built the cat a cat house. Your brother, right? Is he going to build a cat thing for them? Um, yeah, so he built the cat house up there for that cat. And he takes canned food up to it a few times a week. Oh, that's cool. Oh, probably not. <laughs> so... When you are hooked on the idea that your source of income is a particular thing, it is sweet. Typically, it will disappear. You'll get fired. You'll get laid off. Your credit card will dry up um, until you let go. And continue letting go. And then waiting. So there isn't that there's nothing to do. Once it's all gone, you're like, well, or I'm like, it's all gone. Oh, well, alrighty then. So, uh, chop wood, carry water. <laughs> I'll wash the dishes. I'll scoop the cat litter boxes. <laughs> I'll go to town and pick up groceries. Um, until the way forward is shown to me do believe there is a way forward, but I have to wait and be patient for the mud to settle, for the water to clear, and then I'll know. And in the meantime, I hold on to my mollas. <laughs> this is my life raft. I have Linda's over there. I set it up to take pictures for her to put it in her Etsy shop as an example. So I didn't take it down today. She doesn't know I'm doing that. Well, she'll know if she watches the replay. Patience now, damn it. Serenity now! Serenity now! Do you remember that Seinfeld episode? That was so funny. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, another interesting piece of this story is um, 
Michelle, if you're still on here, I got my equivalent of your a letter from an attorney yesterday. <laughs> And it, it freaked me out and it was the last, it, you know, it was the last straw and, um, which leaves you in an interesting place. So I, it's okay. It's really okay. It really is. It sounds horrific on the surface, but it, it's really okay. Uh, it, well, I didn't feel like it was okay yesterday, but I knew, I knew there was more to the story because of where I've been going with my life. So I, needed to call this person. I need to call this person today, this attorney. And, uh, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's really not. I'm not going to lose anything. Uh, everything's going to work out, but the, there's cosmic, you know, the cosmic shit that's related to it. I'll try to get written up at some point and put in our, in our Facebook group and then talk about it on scope. But it's cause it's interesting how it's all playing out. When I can step back from it, it's utterly fascinating. When I'm in it, I want to be like, fuck it. I'm going to run away to Alaska and live on blueberries until the winter and then freeze to death on the tundra. <laughs> you know, those kind of, those kinds of ridiculous thoughts. So, <laughs> so I get this and I go through all this stuff last night and I was talking to my mom last night. I figured out what it's about. It's drying up the last things that I was hanging on to. Huckle, huckleberries. They're terrifying. They, they are meant to terrify you. They are meant to do that. Um, so, uh, I'm going to go live on huckleberries. I'll be your huckleberry. Tombstone. <coughs> um, <laughs> so it's drying up the last sources of obsession with and it's pointing out where I limit myself I have two concepts of how money can come into my life a paycheck or a credit card oh <laughs> we can't we can't stay sacred for long Amelia we're too naughty we're naughty <laughs> we it's balance <laughs> Um, in my life, the only ways I'm aware of that I can make money are to have a paycheck, which I don't have right now, which is, I don't want right now, or to have a credit card. <laughs> this is pointing out to me, hi Cindy, that, um, as I was using my powerful money mala and chanting, money comes through me and you know, the mantra that came with it and adding, I am welcoming new streams of revenue. All my revenue streams overnight dried up. <laughs> I could prostitute myself out. You know, um, I hear every day I'm blocking sex chat followers on Periscope. Sorry. I twisted my tripod there. Um, there's a market for old fat ladies. There's a market for everything. But I could prostitute myself out on the web as an old fat lady. <laughs> in the holler. Yep. Prostitution in the holler. <laughs> prostitution Appalachia style. Appalachia. I think a lot of them say up here Appalachia. Appalachia style prostitution. Um, 1-800 Appalachian Trail. Perry Pross. I'm a Perry Pro. <laughs> oh my God, we're so naughty. So anyway, this is busting loose my perception that, oh, Cindy, you joined just at the right time, right? <laughs> you, you might want to watch the replay. There's some context for this. We're not talking about how to make money being prostitutes for no reason. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, uh, yes, that is the process I'm doing, Sarah, every day for about a week. Um, it is busting loose my perception of how money can come to me. So I kind of believe it can come through clients. It has come through clients when I was doing private therapy, private practice therapy, and now Desire Map workshops. Um, it comes through...
it comes through however it wants to come through. So what did we talk about yesterday? Toddlers screaming their heads off with their hands clenched shut because they couldn't relax long enough to see that I was standing right in front of them with their snack. That's what I am. That's what I have been about money. I'm a toddler on the floor with my eyes shut and my hands closed, wondering where all the money is, wondering where all the abundance is. And the universe is standing right in front of me, and all I got to do is open my eyes. So sometimes you can open your eyes on your own, or sometimes you can get that two by four upside your head that will make you open your eyes and be like, what the fuck? Ow! You open your eyes and you're like, oh, oh, I see. There's some information here. Take your goddamn banana. I'm standing right here with your freaking banana. Will you open your stinging eyes and take your damn banana? God, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? I just hear the goddess, right? What do I have to do to give you this money? The universe will just stand there forever. It will stand there and wait for you to wake up. So little by little, everything is dried up. Everything is gone away. And then I panic and then I go, oh, okay, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. I'm creating this, so I'm choosing love. I'm going to choose love. Every time I freak out, I'm going to choose love. And so then something else dries up. It's like, <clears throat> Bananagram. <clears throat> knock, knock, knock. Bananagram. <laughs> oh, shit. So that happened to me with men, too. Everybody I tried to date, dead end. I liked them. They didn't like me. Or they liked me. I couldn't stand them. Or I just couldn't find anybody. The minute and all through that process, I was like, oh, my God, there's, of course, <laughs> banana emoji, <laughs> bananagram. <laughs> as soon as I let go of needing to have a relationship for love in my life. I met my husband literally two weeks later after, I kid you not, 13 years of banging my head on that brick wall. It took me 13 years to let go, uh, 100% let go, that a relationship was my source of love in the world. I'm stubborn. 13 years I waited. 13 years of letting go and constantly saying, Okay, I know that men are not my source of love. Why can't I let go of this concept? Why can't I let go of this idea that I need to be married? Why do I why can't I let go of this concept that I need to have a boyfriend or whatever? They're not my source. Yeah, it's nice to have a companion. It is. It's nice to have someone crawl over the mountain with a rose in his teeth and they're pouring rain. Thirteen years, Roseanne. Yeah. So it's the same process I realized yesterday. This is the same thing that's happening with money. It's a long time. It is a long time. Um, that stubborn strength is an asset when it's used in the right direction. But when you're not using it in the right direction, it's awful destructive. So, it's the same thing. The bank account is not my source. The credit cards are not my source. The clients, workshop attendees, yes, it's not our source. That is not our source. And if we're hanging our sense of security on that, which I have been, it's going to be taken. It's going to disappear. Or it could be. You have the choice to let it go before it gets snatched out of your hand. So I had one little pocket left that I was hanging my sense of security on. And I would literally say that like, well, at least that's, at least that little pocket is good and means I'm secure means I'm secure. And the, the, you know, these root things are taken care of one little pocket left and it got snatched away. Literally right in front of my eyes, right in front of my eyes. It just disappeared. And, um, Six months, oh God, six months of no income, 
It's the worst. So the last little place that I was hanging my security on is now gone. So last night, yesterday was horrible. Last night, driving home, I had two and a half hours to process this stuff through in silence. Didn't turn the radio on. Oh, so hard. <sighs> so hard. Um, so I ask what I tell you guys to do all the time when you take your hit, process your emotions, and then start asking questions. All I could do when I got in the car last night is ask, how can I see this differently? You let go, and now look. Look at the magic and miracles in your life now. Those, well, I think sometimes when people see someone that's successful, they don't understand that that usually comes at a hard one, after a hard one process. <laughs> Sarah didn't, ma didn't just wake up one morning with this magical impulse to make malas as, and have it be financially profitable. Although I know it's not super profitable at the moment. She had to let go of, a, she had to experience a hard process of letting go first. That's what I'm going through. There's more to that, but um, I'll do a scope just for that because it's a rather long story. So last night I took my hit all day. I processed emotions all day. Um, I catastrophized. I did all that stuff. It's so hard. It's so hard. Then I got in the car and I was like, all right. I'm so fucking exhausted. I've got to drive for two and a half hours. So let's do it. Let's dive in. And how can I see this differently? That's all I got because I don't know. I really literally did not know how to look at that situation differently. How to look at this situation differently. It's not like it disappeared overnight. So, and the first thing that came to me is, okay, so why, what would be the point of this? What would be the point of everything that I reach toward disappearing right in front of me? What would be, what would, what, what would that, what could that possibly be about? And so then I was going back to, okay, what have you been studying lately? What have you been saying in your head lately? What have you been asking for lately? And then I was like, okay, well, I was, I was doing that mantra that said, I welcome new streams of revenue. I've been opening to the idea that it can come from other places, um, and then I was like, okay, well, I've been th talking a lot about choosing love over form and not worrying about where it comes from. I've already all year been working on not worrying about um, finding clients or finding an income or finding a traditional job. Um, so then it just started clicking into place. Okay, well, you were hanging your security on a bank account. Now it's gone. You were hanging your security on credit cards and they are maxed out. So what's left? There's nothing left. That's not true. Everything is left. What's left is everything. What's left is total freedom to sit back, open my eyes. What did I say yesterday? Like a thousand times. Open eyes, open your eyes, open your hands and be curious. It isn't that there's nothing. When she says, when you do this work and then there's nothing to do, there's still stuff to do. So you don't have to let that be a scary concept. There's a lot of stuff to do. But it's more fun. It's fun stuff. It's inspired stuff. Um, it's stuff that you really want to do. And, I, you know, that's not quite here yet. But I, my eyes are open, my hands are open, and I'm curious. Like, okay... I get it. I can't hang my feeling of security on anything material. There you go. Must be losing signal. There you have it. There you are. The only thing left to do is to keep doing what I'm doing. Opening to new sources of income. Eyes open. Hands open. With a sense of curiosity. Okay. A lot of deservability that you had to be with. Yes. This. I will say that this Simply Love Mala really kicked this process into high gear. 
You danced a lot. I need to add more to that. I believe I will do that today. More movement. Recognizing that I wasn't receiving love very well. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, sorry. Not really. <laughs> Recognizing through this process, this smaller process, that I was still not receiving love very well. Of course, the thought that followed immediately upon that is then, uh, that's probably why I'm still not receiving money very well. Duh. Fucking duh. <laughs> you're not receiving love, you're not going to receive money either. And yeah, deservability is a piece of that. Right. So that means I had to challenge my level of intimacy with uh, and allowing people into my space and not worrying about it. Like having faith in my ability to set limits when I need to set limits. I'm a very um, introverted person. Despite all the yapping I do on Periscope, I'm really introverted. But this is the kind of communication that introverts like. It's a small group. It's one-on-one. -on -one. When I'm tired, I can turn the camera off. Um... Oh, my husband just woke up. Did I wake you up? No. Oh, okay. Don't come this way like that. <laughs> you probably won't, don't want to cross about that line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so a lot, a lot I had to look at with the, a level of intimacy with people. Oh, and being introverted. Yeah. <laughs> He works night, so he just got up. Introvert's dream here. This is the introvert's dream. Periscope is awesome. I can talk to my group. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't need to pimp myself out. I got it. <laughs> I don't need to pimp myself out. I got that one. He's younger. He's cuter. He's thinner. <laughs> He'd go for a lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> so, he likes cats. There's big bonuses. <laughs> and he's eating Cocoa Puffs for breakfast. Yeah, all the crazy old cat ladies, right? There's my niche. He just found it for me. Crazy old cat lady market. <laughs> Sold. Ladies, we have ourselves a business plan. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, the mala has triggered a lots of stories and I will, I am trying very hard to find the words. I'm not trying very hard. Not really. Um, when I find the words, I will put them together. If you're not connected to me on Facebook, Find me at facebook.com forward slash L Michelle Wolf, W O L F F, and I'll add you to the group where we talk about post scope uh, insights, post scope insights, and supportive materials because we're certainly not the one, only ones. Kaching of just him with cats. Yeah. I can make a calendar like the firefighters do. <laughs> have you seen there is a series on Facebook of men with cats it's very popular they are clothed so maybe we could adjust that for greater income but um, it, it's very popular When you, there's a there's a is it rock stars with cats it's these big tough tattooed guys with their cats it's very popular I can't remember the name of it it was a whole series <laughs> Big old, like, Hell's Angels looking guys with their cats. Tattoos everywhere and cats. <laughs> Bearskin rug. Cats. I can see it now. Fat old ladies with cats. Yep. That's the perfect market. <laughs> you guys are killing me. 
Where's Annie Leibovitz? I got pictures to take. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh jeez. Thank you for making me laugh so much today, guys. I was pretty tired. Yesterday was pretty rough. Informative, awesome, but rough. <laughs> He's eating his cocoa puffs. He went back in the bedroom. He knows better. Who is big enough to hide my bobs behind? <laughs> I can hold one in each hand, too. <laughs> For variety, I can have one. Ho Hoot and Tucker are both huge. Well, you saw how big he is. I can have one with him, one with Hoot, and then hold Grit and Juna as like a fur bra. Oh my God, I'm going to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, attorney. I've got millions coming. <laughs> you don't care if I pimp you out, do you? <laughs> I got such a dirty look. <laughs> Right, because everybody will be here. We can all do it. We can make a calendar. So if we do it in June, <laughs> we can do a, a calendar. <laughs> and we'll have the woods as a backdrop. It's a day job. Uh-oh. <laughs> Emmanuel Zavallos. Absolutely. There will be so much money to go around. We won't even know what to do with it all. What's that for? Eggs. Eggs? Yeah. I don't get it. Well tell, well, tell me. I don't get I don't get it. I missed a joke. Anyway. Oh, I know. He's making fun of me for laughing like a hen house. He just held out a basket, and I was like, what's that for? And he said, for eggs. Because whenever a bunch of women are laughing, he must be, like, energetically hearing your laughter, too. He's like, here's your basket for your eggs. <laughs> Shut up and eat your Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> he says women sound like hens cluck clucking right before they lay an egg. So rude. <laughs> well, we're going to make a calendar. And we're going to be millionaires. And I'm not going to share with you. Because you're mean. <laughs> a good call. <laughs> Sarah put up a bunch of chicken emojis. That's right. We can cluck if we want to. <laughs> I should probably go. Uh, anyway, that's how that process looks. Take your emotional hit. Start asking how you can see it differently. Information will come. And then you can have a good laugh with your Periscope friends the next day. And make it all better. <laughs> oh, a hawk. Yeah, we're hawks. We're not clucking chickens. The, what I started this for was to say that um, I need to call the attorney, right? So I was going to, I mean, like 15 minutes ago, the progress is that uh, I could never in the past have dealt with that head on by the phone because I spent so many years having vile conversations on the phone as a social worker. I really don't do, I don't like talking on the phone much. I don't think it's totally that, but that's a part of it. Um, I just don't like the phone. Um, except for, you know, when I'm doing work with clients, that's different because it's a totally different energy. Anyway, that's a total tangent. But 
this morning I woke up and I asked my daughter to call the phone guy for me because she is, she has no problems talking. We all do that to her, poor thing. We have her do um, the phone calls that we don't want to do. Like all of us, my mom, her wife, everybody. <laughs> and so last night I was like, I should probably just try and call the attorney myself and just deal with it. And <clears throat> so I got up this morning and I was like, okay, I'm going to call. I, I feel okay about it. I'm going to call. And then I realized what time it was. I was like, oh, I got to do the scope, but I don't really want to wait. And so I let her do the call, but it was a completely different energy. It was more of, I've got a fun thing I want to do. And I can take the time to call him. I feel totally calm about it. And my daughter's willing to do it for me so I can go do something different. And I'm going to take advantage of that. And thank you, daughter. Total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. No anxiety about calling. It is. Are you going to scope it? Because I'm home today. Let's all watch Sarah's Moloscope. So yeah, so I still let her do it for me, but it was more of in how you would ask an assistant to take care of something for you so you can go do your work, your real work. Yeah, I consider that a success. Regardless of what comes of it, I consider that shift in energy a total success. So, um, okay, I'm going to go talk to the Cocoa Puff guy. My divine path ahead is assured. Oh, Sarah, that makes me a little verklempt. Sending wishes for boatloads of bananas. <laughs> if anyone missed the banana scope, it's on the catch channel by now. It's yesterday's. Yesterday's scope was the banana toddler analogy scope. Okay. I really love that mantra a lot. Sarah, are you going to be scoping that later today? <laughs> right, Cindy? <laughs> it's been a good one today. Yeah. Spirit in action. What it looks like. A self-care mini mala. I love that. I love that. So. My catch channel is catch.me forward slash Michelle Wolf 11. Wolf with two F's. Michelle with two L's. Oh, okay. I'll go to the replay and screenshot that monitor. I want that. Oh, you do. Oh, I can probably still... I can go see it yesterday then. So, Mom, yes, Sarah's scope yesterday. The mantra from yesterday. Should still be up. But if it's not, it's on her Catch channel. Which is catch.me forward slash thrive with Sarah. Spelled the correct way, S-A-R-A. All right, I gotta run. Thank you for listening. Thank you. The Santa talk did sound like it went really well. We gotta get you on Facebook, Susan. Um, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the shares, all the support, Amelia. Thank you for your morning scopes, Amelia. I find them very helpful. Very helpful. Um, I don't always get them, but when I do, it sets the tone for the whole day. I actually thank you for all for your scopes. So, so much love. Thank you for the laughs. I really needed to laugh today. I really appreciate all the subjects that were so funny. Although, I am Sarah, sorry that Linda got peed on by her dog. <laughs> so I'm going to go clean up this mess. That's a lie. I'm actually going to leave that there probably all day. Love you. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Talk to you tomorrow from Baby Town again. I have twin day tomorrow. Okay. <laughs>